Hi, Mrs. Young here, and today we will be talking about chemical compounds in cells. Cells function similarly in all organisms because cells consist of, use, and produce many identical compounds. Well, compounds, what are compounds? Compounds are when two or more elements combine chemically. So some examples would be carbon dioxide, water, or glucose. An element is any substance that cannot be broken down into simpler substances. So we have the periodic table of elements. Every single one of these elements that you see here is made up of an atom. An atom is the smallest unit of an element. So when you have a compound, the smallest unit of a compound is a molecule. So here you would have one atom of oxygen and then two atoms of hydrogen. That would, be co that would make up your compound, one molecule of water. So elements that are found in all living things are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur. It's oftentimes you find it abbreviated as schnapps makes it an easy way to remember. So depending on their makeup, compounds are classified into two groups. First you have your organic compounds. This is any compound that contains carbon. So examples would be vinegar, carbon dioxide, or baking soda. The other group is the inorganic compounds, a compound that does not contain carbon. So table salt, or water, or hydrogen peroxide, none of those have carbon in them. So they're classified as inorganic compounds. So there's four really important groups of organic compounds. The first one is carbohydrates. These are really energy-rich compounds. Um, you might think of like a runner. Before a big race, they'll do what's called a carbo load, where they're getting all those carbohydrates in them so that they have all that extra energy for their race the next day. Carbohydrates are made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and they are components for some of the cell organelles. So an example would be the cellulose in a cell wall of a plant cell would be a carbohydrate. Glucose, C6H12O6. That's probably the most important carbohydrate in cells and in the human body, in anything really. Glucose is really important um, for energy, as we'll find out later on. The next group is lipids. Those are your fats, oils, waxes. They're also made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. They actually have more energy than carbohydrates do. Nice thing about lipids is that cells can store their energy in lipids for later use. So an example of that would be bears who hibernate. They store all their energy in their fat and that's what they live on during the winter. The third group is proteins. Large molecules made of smaller, they are, uh, they're large molecules made of smaller amino acids. Here you can see these individual balls are amino acids and a protein is made up of all these different amino acids and depending on the sequence it could be different every amino acid sequence is different it gets you a different protein so they contain carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and sometimes sulfur proteins are really important in body functions um, an example of a protein would be enzymes and they make up cell organelle Finally, we have nucleic acids. Nucleic acids contain instructions to carry out all functions of life. They're made of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. There's two types, DNA and RNA. I just realized I left out the oxygen. So nucleic acids are also made with oxygen. So, that is it on chemical compounds in cells. I hope you found it useful, and thank you for listening.